been taking your Facebook questions about this case. Today's question is about mandatory reporting. A lot of you have asked about this. Dawn Vandenbosch Vela writes, as a mental health clinician, can the guidance counselor for the alleged victim one be charged? In my state, we have 24 hours to report abuse, or we are on the line. Is it the same in Pennsylvania? Doesn't matter whether he, live, he or she believes that's their job. Their job is to report. So let's talk about this mandatory report law with in-session correspondents Beth Karras and Jean Casares. Also bringing in psychotherapist Fran Sherman. Fran Sherman, what I find interesting here is that law, you know, when you think about it, I think instinctually people would think, well, you know what, you see something, you go straight to the, the police officers. But here, the counselor has to take certain steps. Do you think that it should just be mandatory that they go to the police? And, and by the way, I know that we're talking about within an administration, so it's, mm -hmm. it's more of the way the process should work. But again, I'm talking about common sense. Do we just right. immediately go to the police? No, common sense is that it is reported to the state child protective agency and any mandated reporter, and in every state there are so many, just as Jean referred to, it is their obligation to make that report immediately. It's not up to us to say whether we believe or we don't believe the child. It's up to us to make a report to that agency, and it's up to them to do the investigation. And then within the system, you can bring it up the ladder. So, for example, at Penn State, now there's saying that they have to bring it up the ladder and then the person on top should make the report. But, but there's no choice but to make the report. And Fran, let me ask you this uh, as a psychotherapist, and I'm sure, sure there are a lot of people, and we just saw that with one of our viewers, watching mm -hmm. the show who work in administrations and organizations and may be thinking, well, you know, how will I know what, what is something bad and what just seems a little bit untoward because I think that a lot of people are concerned that if they say something about their friend or someone else they saw they might ruin that person's career but they want to stick up for children what is that line they should be looking for well I you know that's a great question Ryan and I, and I think that you know we're always we always have to err on the side of safety with children always and so it's really not our judgment call. It's really if somebody presents you or a child presents you with information, it's imperative that we do make the report. And certainly we don't want to hurt anybody or hurt their career, but we certainly want to make children safe. And again, anybody who makes a report in good faith throughout, throughout the country is immune from liability. And again, your question is, well, you know, well taken. We don't want to hurt somebody's career, but again, we, we need to keep children safe. And in fact, if they're found, if nothing has happened, then it's sort of a non-issue. Okay. But it's, it's hard. Yeah, it, it is a very difficult line, but I think that you're right in terms of erring on the side of the child first. All right, let's bring in Fran Sherman. She is a psychotherapist to talk to us a little bit about Jerry Sandusky and his profile. And, and Fran... Always good to see you, but I have to ask you this question you. right away. I look at that mm -hmm. New York Times interview, and every time I see it, I cannot believe he talks about an attraction to children. I've heard so much about how people say certain things, and they have different ways of explaining themselves. But I want to get your take on what you make of that statement, that statement about being attracted to young boys that seems so outlandish that his lawyer had to jump in and correct them. Right. I mean, I can tell you that, Ryan, it, it makes me ill because that's clearly to me the words of a pedophile. I mean, it, we can all say that we can enjoy young children, um, but the way he says it, his affect, his mood, his demeanor is so inappropriate. And, um, you know, when, when the world is looking at him to kind of talk that way is, is just incredible because I think he's in the complete state of denial. It's, it's, so. Every time I hear it, I shake my head. Now, talk to me about the profile of a pedophile and give me your thoughts on whether or not you think Jerry Sandusky fits that profile. Um, I absolutely do think he fits that profile. Pedophiles are people who really like prepubescent children. Um, so once they're in, and I know there are some victims that he abused till they were, you know, out of, out of puberty, but it really started before they were in puberty. Um, they're, they're obviously not healthy people, and what they do is, I think the grooming is a big part of it. It's, it's really about power and control, and so they take these victims, and so he had the, 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 um, 
his organization, and he had young men who were part of his organization who were extremely vulnerable. And he took those kids who were vulnerable and made them feel like they were important to him and they had a chance to do things in life that they would never do. So he groomed them. He gave them toys and games and all sorts of things and then invited them over to the house and, and actually established a relationship of trust, which obviously was not real trust. The boys then thought he trusted them. And this is what pedophiles do over and over and over. They groom their, their predators and they groom their prey, sort of like animals in the jungle. They groom people. They want to get near them and then they just, they get them. And that's exactly what happened. And it's usually with no remorse. And that's why Jerry Sandusky, I believe, is denying that he did anything wrong because in his own brain, he thinks, I'm fine, I didn't do anything. Because wrapping his mind around that would be, you know, probably pretty horrifying. So how do you, and again, I'm, I'm asking to get into the mental process, but if that is the case, what is it, like a split personality that in one way you act this way and another way you say, no, I'm just great with these kids and I love being around them? Or is it that he convinces himself that if, in fact, and I want to say this all the time when I talk about Jerry Sandusky, if in mm -hmm. fact he did this because he's in a trial, he has a right to right. prove his, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty, but if mm -hmm. in fact he did this, is this a man who, in your mind, just, when, when he is doing these things, he believes it's right or it's just a different person? Who is he in that way? You know, um, I think in his own mind, he, he really what he, Jerry Sandusky or any pedophile cares about themselves and filling their own needs. And again, it's about power and control. It's not really a split personality. Um, that's a very different disorder. But, but really, when he goes into that, mode. He, the only person he's thinking about is himself and filling his own needs and really not caring about the victim. So it's sort of his, his sense of consciousness gets blocked out. It, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, we all have a conscience and when he is, not all of us, most of us hopefully, so when he's in that space, in that place, his sense of right and wrong is gone because it's all about, again, being very narcissistic and filling his own needs with total disregard for what he may doing, be doing to another human being. And it's, it's just horrible. So it's an interesting analysis there. Now let me talk about oh, histronic personality disorder because right. I heard those three words. I said, what in the world is that? And then <laughs> they talked about, well, they talked about the description of maybe this is why you're seeing some of the language in the letters that we saw that he wrote to mm -hmm. one of the alleged victims. Tell us about that and how it applies here. You know, I think, I think what's happening is that, and, I, and I'm not an attorney, I'm a psychotherapist, but mm -hmm. I think that they're pulling things that can apply to Jerry Sandusky. A histrionic, histrionic personality disorder is really somebody who is again, very narcissistic, only cares about themselves, very big, grandiose personality, can be pretty hysterical, and again, with lots of disregard for other people. And so they're apparently trying to use that as a defense, but I can say to you that histrionic personality disorders or any personality disorder, they're not psychotic. So that means that they are aware, completely aware of what they're doing. They're not delusional. Their thinking is clear. Um, they're not healthy, but they are totally aware of what they're doing. So whether he's histrionic or narcissistic or borderline or whatever they want to label him, he is still completely aware and responsible and made choices for his behavior. Ah, okay. So, the prosecution could really use that analysis in their case once the defense or if they decide to bring in some information relating to right. this. Now, one more question right. for you. Sure. We look at this trial and, uh, you know, we can look at the legal aspects and all the different things, but what really matters here are the children. You mentioned Absolutely. that they were vulnerable, that they then were put in a situation where they trusted this man who gave them so much more than they had ever had and mm -hmm. then violated. Right. What happens to them after this trial? How do they go on to live a normal life? 
You know, Ryan, it's, it's, it's what I hope that this country gets out of this trial. Um, these young men have been seriously damaged. They will need years and years and years of therapy to somehow believe that it wasn't their fault because I've worked with so many victims of sexual abuse by pedophiles, by all sorts of people, and they always believe that somehow they did something wrong to cause this. And so the, the work that really has to go in is for, for the therapist or whoever they're working with to really let them know that it, that it wasn't their fault, it, what, you know, it, they weren't wrong. And also they, they have tremendous issues with their sexuality. What am I? Am I gay? Am I straight? Am I, wh who am I? Who am I as a human being? And again, I, and, and it's really traumatizing the shame and the grief that these, these young men feel is, is really overwhelming and they really need a great support system. And I hope that what, I can, what people can take out of this is that they can always try to develop a relationship with their children where their children can be honest because the pedophiles really terrorize these young boys and say, if you tell anybody, something bad's going to happen to you. So they're afraid to tell anybody. And I think for any parent that's listening out there, you know, most coaches are great, but there are a few that aren't. Please talk to your children and let them know if anything doesn't seem right, please talk to me, we'll get through it. You need to establish that safety net at home so that your children can really feel okay about coming to you and not afraid despite what will happen because it happens every day throughout this country. In my practice, I hear every day about people who were abused when they were kids. You know, it's, it's really, it's an epidemic. It's, it's very sad and it's gonna take our country um, a lot of education and a lot of hard work and like the work you're doing today, really letting people know what's going on. And Fran, the message you pass along right there, hopefully parents are hearing that because we've heard it a number of times in different ways, mm -hmm. but it's a message that needs to be repeated so that our kids are protected. Fran, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank right. you. Okay, and Fran, uh, I know you can't be in the minds of the prosecution and the defense in this particular issue, but mm -hmm. what are the one or two things, and I know there's a lot more than one or two things, what are the one or two things you'll be looking for if you're talking to Sandusky to see about this order and to be able to testify about uh, what he might have been experiencing? Well, you know, I think, I think the bottom line is really, Ryan, that even even if he does have histrionic personality disorder he really is an ill man he he has multiple issues so but again that doesn't give him an excuse to do what he did but i would be looking for um his his lack of self-esteem but his grandiose behavior um and 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 lack of empathy towards others i mean those would be clear things that would really indicate that he does have histrionic personality disorder but again i feel very strongly there are people all over the planet that have histrionic personality disorder but that does not make them pedophiles so one thing in my mind um, as a professional should have nothing to do with another Okay, and thank you so much to Bernard Brody, Fran Sherman, Beth Karras, Vinny and Jean.